I am Rebecca from Chemnitz. And in these containers, I have some leftover dyes. This is citric acid mixed with, I think, electric violet. Then a tiny bit of pecan brown. I have used these leftovers on so many projects now. So many. And I am ready to once and for all use them up. Uh, which, of course, I say with an asterisk. Because if I hit some place with the color I'm dyeing, where I love what I have, I may stop. But I'm gonna try to use it all. And we may end up with a speckled yarn. We may end up with something that feels less speckled because we're adding a lot of speckles, in theory, to it. But let's take a look at our yarn. You probably knew this from the title of today's video, but today we are gonna over dye some Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight yarn that is in the color Frozen Tonal. Now, I happen to love this color. I love the different hues we have in here. I'm wondering if there's a swatch of it on the Knit Picks website. There may or may not be. If there is, editing Rebecca will pop that up. But I purchased this yarn on clearance, and I believe at the time I purchased it, it was cheaper than buying the bare yarn, which if you are a hobby dyer, sometimes you might have something in your stash that you haven't used and maybe you want to finally use it, or uh, you might be shopping and then find a good deal on something that is a more light color, a light medium toned color, but not necessarily an off-white bare yarn color. The things that I would look for when trying to pick a color for over dyeing is something that is not super saturated. And then you might also go and pick something where the differences between the colors in your variegated yarn are very subtle. This will mean that they'll make less of an impact on the finished colorway. If there's a lot more contrast between these colors, then they will make more impact on our yarn. However, since the plan is to over dye them with some dye powder and we're basically going to be speckling it, some of this lovely variation will hopefully remain in our yarn. Uh, but if we cover it up, we probably will, but I have a feeling we'll see some of this left. Knit Pick Stroll is 75% Superwash Merino Wool, 25% Nylon. The first thing we need to do for our over dyeing project is pre-soak the yarn because if we want the dye to bind to the yarn, it needs to be wet. Uh, and I know from experience that Stroll absorbs water fairly quickly and so I don't necessarily need as long of a pre-soak. Since I'm planning on speckling onto it and I therefore don't mind if we have uh, some of this original color showing through, it, is, it doesn't matter as much if we have some dry patches where dye can't absorb, but a good rule of thumb for most yarn is to wait about 30 minutes. We will be dyeing our yarn with acid dyes today, which means we're going to need heat and acid for the colors to strike. And I do already have some citric acid mixed in with the dyes themselves. You might choose to pre-soak your yarn with acid, whether it's citric acid or some vinegar. I usually do not pre-soak with acid, mainly because that gives me more flexibility. Sometimes I'll pre-soak yarn for multiple dyeing projects all together at the same time, and other times I might have an idea of what I want to do for a project, but change my mind. And so if I start with no acid, this just gives me the flexibility to add the acid later on. It does not need to be part of the pre-soak. But anyway, I'll see you in 30-ish minutes. Although as I say this, I am looking out my window and I think they're gonna tear down a house from across the street. So we'll see how this goes. I'm bringing over our pre-soaked yarn into my catering steam pan. Okay. And I'm attempting to arrange it so that way most of one side of the skein is exposed, so we have it looped sort of like this versus like that. Uh, that's typically the way I set up my skeins for dyeing. Okay, and eight cups of water is enough so that way the yarn isn't completely compressed together. We may have some spread of color throughout uh, the yarn and beneath the surface, but we still have a lot of yarn that is above the surface as well, so we should be able to get some speckles but the thing that'll bring us away from speckles into more just variegated on top of variegated depends on the total amount of dye that there actually is. 
her lightly. Let's do three tablespoons of white vinegar. I typically start with between two to three tablespoons of white vinegar. My tap water is slightly acidic, uh, so you may need to use more, but this is a ratio where I know things will work well. And now we're going to start heating things up because I want our dye bath to be hot when we go ahead and add, start adding the color. So I'll come back uh, wearing my Deluxe Rubber Respirator Mask, Safety Glasses, and Gloves because whenever you're dealing with dry dye powder, you want to make sure you're wearing the proper personal protective equipment. All right, let's do this. We're going to start with this little bit of brown that I have. And I'm just going to do this in this area that is closer to me, adding on those speckles. And we'll add a little bit more to the bottom area on the other side when we flip. Ugh, but I can already tell I'm not using that much powder. We'll go heavier with the purple, I think. Oh, yeah. This is going to end up being very purple. You can see that this color is spreading a little bit more than the brown did, but I think when I mixed the brown for a video uh, last December, I think back then I used less dye in relationship to the citric acid than I did with the electric violet, but I can't speak for certain. What I can say as I pinch the dye and sprinkle this on all over that we are going to have some areas with spread because our water level is not the lowest it could possibly be. And I'm definitely feeling like oh, we're going to have to work hard to use up all the dye. Now my fingertips are getting a little bit uh, coated in dye because things are a little bit steamy. I'm not worrying about introducing liquid to this dye because I am trying to use it up. And the more dye I use and layer on, the less speckled our yarn will feel, uh, the more mottled it is. But to some extent with these little specks, the dye is going to strike a little more to one side than another. We likely will end up with something that is just very purple in the end with maybe some blue undertones. but. Yeah, the more dye I add on, the more dense these speckles become. And I'll zoom in in a second. So here you can see those speckles, those little specks of color, but also some areas where we have more color. And it's not a solid. You see the speckles and the color behind. But the more and more I flip and layer the color, the less things are going to feel like they are over here and the more they'll feel like they are over here which is not erasing that beautiful variegated canvas we started with, it's just shifting it. And for this amount of coverage that we have right now, I did not use very much of the dye that I have yet. So we'll see where we go. But for now, I want to wait about five minutes just to give these colors a little bit of time to set. If you add the dye and move the yarn right away, you'll spread out the colors more, giving you more of the purple on the background and a little bit less that's visible as little speckles, which is beautiful in its own right. It's just that's a different overall technique. As we flip the yarn to the other side uh, to try to expose areas that we did not dye, you can see a little bit of color has come through. And I want to remember that that's where I want to add the little bit of brown that I have left. But we'll need to do multiple flips and we'll move the yarn, try to expose more areas and add coverage and take this as far as we can. But whenever I come back in real time, apologies for big thumps or indie barking. They are now tearing down the house across the street from me. And like there's literally equipment going through the roof of the old house that I can see out the window of my kitchen. So, <laughs> hopefully by switching to voiceover, I will be able to uh, save you from a lot of that. While still wearing my respirator mask, I continue to add on our speckles. 
are acid dyes that are mixed with citric acid powder. I know I didn't go through the proportions of the acid dye powder to citric acid powder in this video. Editing Rebecca will try to pop that up on the screen because I'm sure I wrote that down from back when I mixed these originally. But I usually have a lot more citric acid powder volume wise than I do acid dye powder. You can add this kind of mixture into some kind of spice jar so you can shake it onto the yarn. That might go a little faster, but it's easier for me today to just have the glove fingertips take those pinches and apply it over the yarn. I did wait about five minutes in between each flip to give that dye time to strike. And even though I know we will end up with likely a lavender base <laughs> overall, this allows us to have some contrast between those purple heavy speckles we're adding and whatever that base color will become. There are many different reasons why you might pick yarn with the intention to over dye. You might buy that specifically or you might find something in your stash that you already had and but don't want to use and want to transform it. And so you can kettle dye to just completely cover up what was there before and transform it that way or you can do something that sort of leans into the colors that are already there to create something different but still keeping part of the original character. Your choices are as unlimited when it comes to over dyeing as they are with starting with bare yarn that has no color on it at all. Unless your color is too dark. <laughs> the darker the color is, the harder it's going to be to cover up and transform into something else. But over the years, I've bought a lot of yarn specifically to over dye it for videos. And so hopefully by showing different ways I transform this, this might inspire you of how to transform your own yarn. And during this whole process, I kept telling myself, trust yourself, Rebecca, trust yourself. I know your goal is to use up all of this dye, but if you hit a point where the yarn feels finished, let that be finished and let that be the end. <laughs> Once I was satisfied with the amount of color coverage, I added some more water and then let things heat for 30 minutes from the last time I added dye. It's now been 30 minutes and I'm really curious how much of the house <laughs> coming down across the street, which it seems to be all knocked down. There's just a pile of rubble now that'll probably be carted away tomorrow, but I'm curious how much of that was through the voiceover because I could feel every little punch. <laughs> but the good news is I used up all of the dye just like I wanted. And I need to change the exposure. We have lovely speckled yarn, but we still have some of that blue, that original blue underneath. I wonder how much you'll feel the variation, uh, but oh, it's so fun. Okay, I'm gonna set this aside to cool. So then it will be room temperature when it's time to wash. We're not gonna wash our yarn. There's a little bit of soap in here already. Uh, I always move the zip ties when I get to this one. I'm not expecting that there'll be any bleeding, but oh, this is so pretty. And we still have some of that blue tonal variation that I can see. Uh, I think we've got super heavy speckles, which is fun, but we don't, and there's some brown too but we didn't lose what was there already. And so there's no reason why you also can't just buy a solid uh, to start with uh, and to over dye that. And I have over dyed and speckled on top of a solid red. I also have some other videos where I've over dyed with a deeper color to sort of reduce the variation that there was in the yarn. So there's a lot that you can do when you're starting with something you may already have in your stash. But anyway, I'm gonna finish rinsing out the soap here and then I'm gonna put the yarn through my spin dryer to remove a lot of the liquid and then we'll hang it up to dry so we can see what the finished color way looks like. I did it, I did it. I finally used up all of that extra dye that I had on hand. And we do have a very heavy speckled color way here. The little bits of brown are a little bit more subtle, but they are definitely present. As are those tonal areas of our original yarn base. Although the tonal nature of the yarn is a lot more subtle feeling now because you see all the contrast between the speckles and the backdrop. 
One thing that's different about this project versus other projects where I've dyed speckles over a variegated and tonal yarn is that the colorway I started with had already been reskained, and so that blended all of those shades of blue together a lot more than a tonal yarn that I might dye myself where, I mean, I suppose I could reskein it before dyeing, but likely 99.9% <laughs> sure I did not reskein it. So the lighter patches are all in one segment versus being blended all together. And so that is one difference with the result that we have here today, but you can always go ahead and reskein your yarn in between different rounds of dyeing. It's more work into each skein, but when you're dyeing for yourself, you can do whatever you want. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and would you like to see more over dyeing videos? I'm pretty sure I have more yarn in my stash that I purchased specifically with over dyeing in mind. And again, not because I have anything against the original yarn, but I think that these are helpful videos to share. But if you ever have a particular type of over dyeing project you would like to see, like for one example I took the red yarn and added black speckles to it, let me know in the comments because I do keep track of this and I keep an eye out for whenever yarn's on sale so then I can pick some up to play with. Please subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. And if you want to help support Chemnitz, go and check out the Chemnitz Patreon. If you sign up to become a patron, you can get some really cool perks. There's a monthly newsletter, early access to the Dye Pop PS series, and then at different tiers there are other perks such as advance notice of shop restocks and then even permanent coupons that get delivered every month, depending on your Patreon level that you pick. You can also follow me over on Patreon for free, and depending on your settings, you can get an email whenever I make a public post, which is the closest thing I have to an email list, <laughs> because otherwise I don't have an email list. But whenever I launch big pre-orders or have something special going on, I do try to go make announcements across social media, and that includes Patreon. But of course, the biggest way that you can support the content is by engaging with my videos here on YouTube. The more that you interact with them through a watch, a comment, a thumbs up, the more YouTube's likely to recommend them to other people, which helps the channel grow. Thank you so much for watching.